Welcome back everyone, this is Jared with Fanboys Forever, and today we're going to be doing a review of a figure that I have been anticipating for what seems like half a year, and that's because maybe it was. Anyway though, way back when, in 2017, Mezco announced the ultimate version of their Mezco 112 Collective line Joker. And of course there had been a previous version of the figure, and it was great, but I felt like it just was missing that little extra something. And as soon as this was announced, I just jumped on it. I knew uh, immediately that this was the Joker that I was hoping for, but there's only one way to find out. And today we're gonna to be doing an in-depth review where we break down every little thing about the figure and let you know if it's worth it. Now, at this point, I'll go ahead and tell you that it's really hard to get a hold of. Uh, the pre-order sold out as many Mezco store exclusives tend to do. Uh, but in a way, I guess this review can kind of help you determine whether or not you want to pay any of those secondary market uh, prices. So let's go ahead and start out by looking at the box. Strangely enough, I suppose that if there was any one element that may be considered slightly disappointing, it could be the packaging. Of course, we know that Mezco are masters of action figure packaging and we know they do a spectacular job, but there's a couple of things about the Joker packaging that I sort of missed from their other stuff. For one thing, there is actually no uh, kind of slip cover. And of course, Mezco usually does those really nice slip covers. Uh, not here. They're, it's just a box. It has the nice screen printing on the front with the J and everything. DC Comics Joker. It has the cool little Mez sticker up there for it being a store exclusive. But honestly, there isn't any outer sleeve like we usually get on the side. We get a J, almost like a card. On the back, we get this cool image of the Joker laughing. I really like the artwork here. And on the side, we have another J. And at the top, just has the 112 logo. I would have loved uh, one of those nice slip covers like they usually do, uh, but not here. So let's go ahead and crack it open. I have removed the figure and all the accessories, but just to give you an idea, it's not really anything out of the ordinary or nothing that we kind of haven't seen before. As you can see now, Mezco has this little slip that comes in with every figure. It's kind of explaining to people that these are not toys for uh, seven or eight year old kids. But instead, these are supposed to be collector's items. We should be very careful with them. Uh, thankfully, Mezco has some of the sturdiest products in the business, so that's never something I have to worry about too much. As you can see, we just have the clear clamshells that kind of go over each other. And on the back, we would have the stand that houses all the hands and everything, but I have removed all that stuff. So nothing really to ride home about here. All right, so to kick things off with looking at the actual figure itself, I thought I'd start with the figure and kind of, I guess, uh, for lack of a better term, it's most stripped down state where he's wearing the least of the three intended looks that you can do with the figure. And that way it's a little bit easier to talk about articulation and all that. As I go through the three different looks for the figures, I'll also be changing out the hands and the accessories each time. So it's almost like we're reviewing three different figures, which is uh, kind of an apt statement to make about this as you'll soon see. So let's go ahead and look at the head first off. And oh my goodness, uh, you're going to see a continuing trend as we look at all the different head sculpts that this figure comes with of excellence, not only in sculpting, but in paint application and just all the way around. Um, Mezco has outdone themselves. These faces are so lifelike that they're by far the most frightening Joker figures that's been made. Uh, when you can look inside of his mouth and the tongue is painted with great detail, I mean, that's, that's really saying something. Uh, the strands of hair individually sculpted and very, very impressively painted as well with a very nice black wash running through. You can see each tooth is painted individually, and you have this incredible, subtle wash work that we're going to see through all the different heads. And this wash work allows for kind of a flesh tone to come through, almost like we're seeing the remnants of what the Joker's skin used to be like. Now on the back, you can see all the sculpting is done very impressively back there as well. Um, you would be remiss to try to find the separation line in the sculpt here, because I'm not really seeing it right now. Uh, the hair, the color kind of gets a little bit lighter as it goes down here. This is so impressive in so many ways, and it just looks great from every angle. And I can't imagine a more traditional, uh, better, more traditional laughing Joker head. So this is an extreme accomplishment on the part of Mezco. Uh, as for the accessories he's brandishing with this particular version, you have this kind of Joker gun that kind of has the purple uh, grip right here. And this little plume, this effect piece, can be removed. So if you just want the standard gun, you can do that, and that works as well. So I'll just pop that back in there because I do like the effects pieces. I'm always a, a sucker for those things. 
And then right over here, we just have the basic knife, the serrated blade, or it seems to be slightly serrated. Maybe not. But uh, either way, I have them using the knife holding hand. Neither of these accessories are attached to the hands or anything like that. But uh, I just thought I would show you a couple of different uh, variations. Let's go ahead and talk about articulation. Now, it's worth noting that the arm articulation, especially at the shoulders, is going to vary based on how kitted up you have the Joker, like how much clothing uh, you've got on him. So I decided to start here because this will show you the, the most full range of articulation possible for the figure. I'm gonna start with the head. Uh, each head that you can switch out, it's got a neck attached. So as you swivel it around, the whole neck goes. And unless you really want to try the fabric, this is about as much uh, swivel as you're going to get right here from either way. Now it's quite a decent amount, but you can't go down very far. It seems like it doesn't want to do that. Um, and then look enough about this far. So it's not a dramatic uh, range or anything like that, but it still works. Of course, there's the standard kind of uh, just turning joint here. You can turn them full 360 all the way around. It's not going to be inhibited by any of the clothing options. So the head articulation stays the same, of course, no matter uh, what outfit choice you have going. For the chest, you can feel that there is a uh, diaphragm joint in there. However, when I see 12th scale little button applications on a shirt like this, um, and they appear to just be like printed on, I really don't wanna push this too much, especially because the shirt, I guess, is tucked into the pants down here, but it can swivel, but I'm only gonna swivel it about that much either way. And I'm sure you could go all the way around and everything, but I would rather not for a $100 figure. <clears throat> With the shoulders, uh, in this form, they're pretty uninhibited. So let's just go over one of them. You can feel that there's a hinge right in there in the shoulder. You can get them to go like that. I wouldn't go any further. I don't want to strain that sleeve, the green sleeve down there from the shirt. We'll put them back down. Uh, if you work with them a little bit, the arms go pretty close to the chest, but that's about as close as you can get. You can see then we have a hinge joint right here in the elbow. What's great is that there's a full 360 swivel as well, and it goes up about this far. So you're not gonna get it crunched up too crazy in there, but I'm kind of glad that they didn't have kind of a wild looking joint to make it crunch up any further because it would have ruined the look for the short sleeve look, which is a very nice look, by the way. And then over here on the wrist, we have the standard uh, Mezco scheme where it just goes up and down like this. You can of course swivel it all the way around. Now watch out with these wrist pegs because I had one of them separate on me, uh, which it's important to note that it didn't break. It's just the two pieces that make up the wrist peg kind of came apart, so I had to heat them back up and push them back together. So be careful as you switch the hands on this guy. I really hadn't had that happen with uh, Mezco before. It might have happened on Space Ghost, I can't remember. But uh, that's kind of the upper body there. And like I said, there's not, I don't, I can't tell if there's a waist joint necessarily, but this diaphragm joint up here kind of supplants it anyway. With the legs, uh, you have quite a bit of articulation. He can do the splits about this much before I don't feel comfortable going any further because the inseam of the pants is pretty high and I certainly don't want to break apart the stitching. And then we can put them back together and we can bring it up about this much until I don't feel comfortable anymore with it. And uh, while we're down here, as you can see, it's important to note that these socks are sculpted with bat symbols on them. And I don't know if that is a, I mean, there we go. I don't know if that's necessarily something from the comics or something more from Suicide Squad where you had the bat symbol socks, but I just think that's really delightful. With the green color scheme, it sort of reminds me of like Batman Forever branded socks that were on the shelves when I was a kid. As you can see, we have a, uh, what appears to be anyway, kind of a single, mm, might be, mm, yeah, it's double. It's a double knee joint. So you can see we can get a really deep uh, knee crunch right there. And then he also has a thigh swivel up here. Now it doesn't matter too much because the pants uh, hide it. So that's good that you can't see the cut line or anything like that. But you can swivel all the way around if you so desire. But with the pants, I really don't want to uh, push it too much. You can see down here with the excellent sculpting for these kind of dress slacks the Joker is wearing. Uh, these are just really nice. It's kind of unbelievable that there would be so much attention paid to the Joker's dress slacks. You can see he goes up and down quite a ways with a hinge inside. And of course, you've got the ankle pivot just like that. He can pivot quite a bit, not any kind of crazy amount or anything like that, but enough to where you can get him in wide stances and he can hold them pretty well. Um, 
Other than that, that kind of does it for the articulation on the Joker. He's very well articulated. You can get some very dramatic stances and some, some great uh, combat stuff. If you're like me, I try not to go too extreme with what I do uh, with Mezco. You can see you can get a pretty good running pose for the leg. We'll go back about that much before you don't feel comfortable anymore. At least I don't. And then about that much forward. And you can get some really dramatic stuff. Uh, I really like this look for the Joker, even though I'll be honest, this will be the look that I probably keep him in the very least. Um, it's, it's nice, it's kind of a punk look. Of course though, we have the Clown Prince of Crime version of the Joker coming out that may uh, kind of supplant this look a little bit. But I really like this. I can't imagine that many people will display him like this all the time, but very nice. Here we have the Joker at kind of the midpoint where he's uh, not as down dressed as he was in the last segment but he's not got the trench coat on either. He's just wearing the suit jacket. Uh, as you can see, I've switched the head out and switched the hands and accessories. So let's take a better look at the head. For me, this head is the Jack Nicholson kind of tribute head. The Joker has more of the Jack Nicholson hair. Uh, he kind of has a, in my opinion, it almost seems like kind of a pudgier face and a little bit of a raised forehead. In my personal opinion, I think this is as close as Mez and the crew could get to Jack Nicholson without having to worry about legal stuff. So I really appreciate it. I think it's a, it's a great effort. I think that it honors uh, Jack Nicholson in so many ways. And I, I think it reminds me of him just a great deal. And plus it's just a great classic Joker head. So, I mean, uh, as you can see, the tones on the head are just amazing. Paint applications are unbelievable. You can see the eyes are painted uh, perfectly. The lips kind of have that sheen to them. And once again, I, I don't think that I've ever seen an operation, a paint operation quite as amazing is this kind of subtle wash that I keep talking about on all these heads. I mean, I can see every fold in the skin. It's eerily realistic. Keep in mind that this thing is the same size or smaller than most of your DC Universe classics from back in the day, and it looks this good under macro lens. So, I mean, th this, is, this is an accomplishment, and this is probably my favorite head sculpt out of all of them. So looking at the outfit, uh, the tailoring is very, very nice here. This collar sticks up just a hair a bit more than the other side, but I think I can kind of work with that and adjust it over time. And you know, we've all uh, futzed so many of our 12th, uh, 12th scale figures and six scale figures over the years. I think we can figure out how to deal with that. Um, you can see on the back, there's a nice pinstriping uh, pattern that's going very, very nice. It's almost like a blue pinstripe pattern. You can see over here on the sides, the sleeves are uh, very appropriately sized to where much like the Joker does in the comics when he'll raise his arm, a lot of the time you can see his white wrist. Uh, speaking of his white wrist, let's go ahead and look at the accessory hand that he comes with. It's this amazing looking Joker card, and I just think that is tremendous. Uh, the hand is sculpted perfectly. The, I don't think the card comes out. I think it's glued in. Uh, I wouldn't want to take it out anyway. I'd hate to lose this thing. On one side, you see the kind of classic Joker card. And on the other side, you can see that it's more of the blind uh, that you'd see on the back of any kind of poker card. Kind of reminds me of the Dark Knight card. And I think that's what they were going for with his hand is the iconic shot of Heath Ledger Joker kind of pulling the card and laying it on the table in front of uh, Michael Jai White and the other gangsters. You can see over here, I have kind of the uh, shaving blade, the razor blade that he comes with. This is in the hand that's kind of meant to grip knives and such. So that looks really good too. Uh, this can actually be folded in all the way. And it's very nice, it has little bolts there and it folds up just like so. And it becomes one piece. So really nice overall. And uh, I would be very careful with this because it feels a, a little bit delicate to me. So I'm gonna be very careful with uh, how much I do that. I probably won't be, uh, won't be fooling with it too much but it does seem a little delicate. And certainly this card hand right here, if it was to take a shelf dive, I'm not sure if the card or the fingers would survive. But uh, like I've said in the past, Mezco has very sturdy products, so it's not like I'm uh, overtly worried about it, but I just think that taking caution would probably be the best approach. It's probably also worth noting that if the Joker's feeling a little uh, GQ that particular day, you can also pop the collar on this bad boy and it actually holds. So uh, this looks nice as well, and this is probably a, a nice option when you have the trench coat on if you want to vary it up a little. This is probably the look that I'm going to keep the Joker in for most of the time. To me, this one is the one that just kind of speaks to me. And here we have the Joker in what I would call his uh, final form, all kitted up with his trench coat and hat and everything. Kind of, uh, it's definitely uh, 
it's definitely kind of an 80s, sort of early 80s look for the Joker. Uh, I love it. Uh, the trench coat itself is really nice. It comes in its own little separate sleeve in the packaging, which I always admire to protect it. Uh, the trench coat, you can't really pull it up any closer to the neck than this. This is kind of as close to the neck as you're going to pull the trench coat up to, and uh, it doesn't really go any further. I know I originally I saw some pictures of this guy, and I thought, well, people just aren't pulling it in far enough, but this is kind of where it rides, kind of where it sets. And by the way that they cut the inseams and the shoulders here, uh, and under the arms, that's kind of just where it's going to go. Uh, so here it is. It actually has a little wire right here, so you can pose the kind of belt portion of the coat and kind of pose the ties around in different ways. You can do a lot of interesting things uh, with that and you have a lot of extra display options. Of course, I also put the crowbar in his hand, which we'll talk about the accessories here in just a second. And uh, this is a good time to look at the hat head sculpt. So with each of the different forms of the Joker, I've been showing different head sculpts off. And this one is just glorious. And I think anybody who displays them in the trench coat will probably de facto go with the hat because so many of the Joker's appearances in trench coats, uh, he's been wearing the hat. So I just think it's a really good look. It also recalls Batman 89, uh, the classic film. And you can see that the detail is unbelievable. Uh, once again, we have a situation where Mezco has outdone themselves and kind of the paint operations that they did. You can see that there's sort of just like the other heads, that subtle wash it gets into the grooves to where it's almost like the Joker's skin is sort of dyed this color, but he still has some remnants of the natural flesh tone. So overall, an extremely impressive head sculpt. Here's the back of the trench coat as well. We'll get a closer look. Um, there's one thing about the trench coat that I would point out is it almost seems like the tailoring is maybe a little big and the arms, which is one of the only drawbacks I would have about the coat itself. Uh, you can kind of see here that it gets a little puffy, especially on this arm for whatever reason. Uh, but that can be managed with a lot of uh, creative posing options, especially if you put his arms as, about as far down as the arms will go. If you put them down like that, it kind of contains it. And uh, there's also sort of a concern that he gets a little bulky because you have the purple coat on under the trench coat. So I guess that is a concern in some ways. I don't mind it too much. I still think that he kind of keeps that slender look. Once again, you can use that belt for a lot of different posing options. He's kind of flying in the wind. Now, from what I can tell, I don't believe that there's any kind of wire option inside the coat itself. So as you can see, I just tried to pose it like that and it kind of, I think you could get creative and I think you could make it stay in certain ways with the arms, probably like that, but it would be a little tough. I was honestly hoping for a little bit of wire, just some subtle wiring right here in the coat and I would have had that wiring I would rather have it rather than in the belt portion of the coat. But still, if you are uh, if you get creative and if you've been posing as long as I have, then you know that there's a lot of ways to get around that. I really like the kind of lighter purple that they went with for the trench coat. I think it contrasts well with the rest of the suit. Uh, the Joker's clothes in general, which I don't have the original release, but the Joker's clothes in general do seem to uh, be a little lighter and uh, feature more of the pinstriping and that's more the hue that I like with the Joker anyway. Here we have the Joker and his Please Batman No More uh, look. I've got him dressed back down and he's also got the uh, battle damage head sculpt. Now this one, <laughs> truth be told, I probably won't use it that much except for some uh, some posing sessions and maybe some some up close photos or something like that but I really like it but it's uh, it's probably not apropos to a lot of the things I'm going to do with this particular Joker. You can see the swelling has been sculpted really well. Uh, not a statement I ever thought that I would say. Uh, you can see the kind of the black eyes, and he's actually missing the teeth. They're not just blacked out, but they're they're also not sculpted in there as well. So uh, I think this is a really impressive look. I really like it. I like how the hair is messed up, and they've sculpted that as well. On the back, you can see that once again, we have this uh, wonderful sculpting goes on through the back. And of course, that impressive flesh colored wash that we keep talking about. So he has a couple of accessories going on here that we hadn't talked about previously, inc including this Uzi here. Now this plume, this effect piece, is kind of the same thing that we were using earlier. It can just be removed just like that. And you can also see that you have a magazine or a cartridge. I'm not exactly sure what you would refer to it as. You can remove that, you can jam it uh, inside of it. There's also a shorter version, or an extra, should I say, 
of that uh, same cartridge. You can just put that in. You should just click in. So it's kind of a, I think it's a little bit shorter maybe. You can see it's very detailed. It has some wear on it. So we just take that back out. You also have this little kind of, um, I don't know, I guess it's just the bottom of the gun. You can push it all the way through. And at the bottom, it's just more of a complete version without it hanging out. So it looks really nice. I may not have uh, put that in there correctly because it's kind of showing at the bottom. I'm not really sure, but uh, I, I really like the gun. I think it's nicely done. It's very nicely detailed. The other hand that we have here that we hadn't previously really got this, uh, to show before is the Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines Memorial Accessory. To celebrate the anniversary of the film, <laughs> we have the Talk to the Hand hand from Terminator 3. Uh, I like this one a lot because you can use it for a couple of different purposes. You can kind of do the, oh, it's a magic trick scene from The Dark Knight, or you can do the, uh, please Batman, no more, please, I've had enough. I like that one a lot. You can do waving, you can do whatever you want uh, with that hand, and there's a whole lot of leeway that you can do. You can have uh, the Joker, you know, kiss the hand where he's feeling kind of royal. What's great about all these accessories is it looks like they're all going to be interchangeable. Uh, for the uh, Clown Prince of Crime version. And of course, from what I understand and all the forums I've seen, all these accessories are interchangeable with the standard Joker release. So if you have that one, I don't. But if you do have it, uh, you can interchange with those as well. So one of the last things we'll talk about in the review is the final head sculpt. And this one is the one, in my opinion, that even though uh, I probably won't use it the very most, I do plan on using it a little because I don't think I have ever seen a more realistically sculpted expression of hatred or vindiction in my entire life. Uh, as you can see, he has this look on his face. I, I don't even really know how to describe it. Uh, I would I sort of call this jilted Joker because man, uh, he looks just dejected and angry and hateful. And it's sort of, to me, kind of a cross between Tim Curry and David Bowie, which uh, they've just nailed it. I mean, everything from the slightly puckered lips kind of uttering some sort of curse or uh, some, some kind of hatred towards Batman, the narrowed eyes, the way that the eyeshadow almost seems to sort of be running uh, in a way, I think they've just nailed it here. And I think out of all the sculpts, if there's one that has like an artistic merit more than maybe any of the others, perhaps this is the one because I don't think I've ever seen anything like this accomplished in six inch scale action figures. And this would be incredible for a 12 inch scale action figure. So just wrap your head around that a little bit. Uh, as I turn them here, you can see some of that fine wash work in the ears and on the back of the hair as always, uh, never neglected. So this one is truly impressive. One accessory that we didn't talk about as much earlier is the Jason Todd beating crowbar right here. Uh, as cruel and violent as this may be, uh, that's definitely what this is intended to be with the blood kind of speckled on it a little bit. You can see the bottom of the crowbar here, which is flattened out realistically. Uh, this is very well done. Uh, I, I like this accessory a lot. I'll probably actually be using this accessory pretty frequently. So this is definitely one of those that won't be neglected uh, when I have this guy posed up. Uh, I've heard that there's no way that Mezco wants to do a Robin figure. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm not really sure what the deal is with that, but it's uh, be kind of a shame because you could get some great, albeit a little violent, poses. Um, one of the other accessories that we've only seen briefly in the review is this excellent uh, display stand with the ha ha ha's on it. You can almost use it as a background for photos. See if I zoom in a little bit and kind of use that. I mean, it works. You can just hide this little part. And it, it sort of works, even though he certainly does not look like he's saying ha 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 with his current facial expression. <laughs> but I like this one a lot. Unlike the Ascending Night Batman, the little peg here does a really good job of anchoring his foot in. You can see there's just little holes at the bottom. And the Ascending Knight kind of had a shallow connection. This one is very, very, very sturdy. Uh, so I think that's really good. And I'm certainly gonna use that stand. One thing that comes with the stand that I'm probably definitely not gonna use is the flight stand because unless Batman is punching the Joker so hard he's flying through the air, I really don't know what I'm gonna do with this thing. I think most people don't use these anyway, unless you've got a flying character like Space Ghost or Superman. The last couple of accessories are probably the most impressive in terms of sculpt and paint application. Here we have this incredible little dynamite with the uh, fully painted little cords and things going to it. 
There's even a completely printed timer on there. You can see we'll turn it this way. It's totally printed. You can read all of the numbers. <laughs> That's incredible. These little gold pieces of wire. This is just fantastic. Uh, I, I absolutely love it. It kind of reminds me of the dynamite sort of situation that we had going in the Death in the Family. I think a lot of this figure is meant to homage uh, a Death in the Family, the story about Jason Todd being killed, the former Robin. And then we also have this, which I'm kind of delighted by and also horrified a little bit, and that's these little chattering teeth. Uh, you can see that the chattering teeth has seen better days because apparently it's gotten a tooth knocked out and it's been replaced uh, with a gold partial. <laughs> so uh, these are just, these are hilarious. They're uh, totally flat footed, so you can set them down beside the Joker. You can just have them chomping away while they kind of run alongside the Joker. If I kind of go down here, you can just put them right down here on the base. It's kind of a shame. It's almost the same colors as the base because it kind of gets lost in there, but it can be a fun part of the display. And I'm glad that they gave us such a neat little bonus. I, in a way, I sort of think the gold tooth might be an homage to the Jared Leto version of the Joker. Here he is alongside Batman, and just a little height comparison for us. He may be slightly taller than Batman, possibly, and I sort of like that though. I'm always uh, kind of wanting Joker to be slightly taller than Batman. I think it's uh, it's more visually interesting when Batman is a little more stocky, and uh, he's kind of gang Joker's kind of gangly and kind of tall. I think that it makes the posing look a lot better. It's uh, just something a little more interesting. And uh, Joker and Deathstroke are in pretty good uh, scale together. I don't think that there's any issues that will prevent them from looking good on the shelf. Uh, Joker may be slightly taller than Deathstroke, I think. But overall, I think they look really good together. I personally think that the Joker should always be a little bit taller than those around him. He always strikes me as kind of a gangly, sort of a tall guy. So I always like to see that. I own several of the Mezco 112 Collective figures. But I think that this one may take the cake in terms of execution, sculpting, and just the amount of stuff that you get. It's almost a real shame that this was a Mezco store exclusive because there's so many redeeming qualities about this particular piece that it's, uh, it's kind of sad to think that a lot of folks will not end up getting to own him. So here's hoping that maybe they'll find a way to do some sort of reissue, although uh, Mezco has said in the past that they're not really interested in doing any kind of reissues. I think that's a shame. I think uh, people should be able to get into this line and enjoy it. If you missed out on this one, there's always eBay. I have no idea how much he's going for. I'd, I'd say it's uh, probably pretty horrifying. Overall, this figure is incredible. In conclusion, it's very possible that we might be looking at one of the great contenders for six inch scale figure of 2018 right here. I think this Joker succeeds on all fronts. I think that any minor criticisms are easily overlooked in lieu of the incredible accomplishment that Mezco has achieved here. This is sort of, in my opinion, the end all be all Joker figure, and I anxiously await to see uh, anything else that they try with the Batman universe. I know there's Catwoman coming out, and there's some, uh, there's a new Batman, of course, coming down the line. Uh, my advice to you about this line would be to make sure that you don't get left at the train station and get on as quick as you can. Uh, thankfully, I kind of had that revelation as soon as this figure came up for pre-order and realized this is something I didn't want to miss out on. Hopefully Mezco will take notes for future releases and keep giving us these plus stuff releases with all these great accessories. Anyway guys, until next time, take care, hope you enjoyed the video, and remember, rate, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you can be notified of future Fanboys Forever videos. God bless, take care.